Hey guys, I won't be doing a part two of this video until this video hits 10 likes. So if you do end up liking it, don't forget to hit that like button. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Mango Etc. And I'm here today to bring you another what if. Now this what if is going to be bringing one character from another series into another crossing a, a hero no Sora with Coco in the basketball kind of because we, we, we will be taking Kagami Tiger and putting him in the Hero no Sora universe. But before we dive into the what if, we need to establish how exactly Kagami got into this verse. And it's fairly simple. Now, I'm not 100% certain of when Kagami flew from back to Japan from America, but whenever that was. That is essentially when he went from Koriko no Basketball's Japan into a hero no Sora's Japan. So a plane across the multi multiverse into a hero no Sora Japan and his only him alone and the other people that was aboard that plane that have crossed over to the into the um hero no Sora universe. There will be no other Koriko no basketball players, no generation mi miracles, no Siren members, nobody else. It's Kagami Tiger. So we start things off with the opening scene of A Hero No Sora episode number one. And this is where we see Sora in the midst of getting bullied by some bullies, obviously. But this doesn't go as it usually as it usually does within the original story. We see Sora, you know, willing to defend himself, but just before a fight between Sora and the bullies breaks out, this is where Kagami comes onto the scene and he's like, you know what, just leave this guy alone. Doesn't you know don't, don't trouble him. Kagami gets into a fight with the bullies. He takes out like I think there was five of them, so he takes out like out three, two or three of them about no trouble. And this is where the bullies like, whoa, 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 you know what, this is not worth it no more. Let's go. And so they bail out. Unlike in the original story where they know they pocketed some of Sora's money. On this occasion, because Kagami interfered, they end up leaving out empty handed. Sora then thanks Kagami for everything he did. Kagami's like, Yeah, no problem, it's whatever. And he's walking, he walks away before Sora is able to get his name. So, straight after that, just like in the original story, Chiaki then does appear. And just like in the original story, they pretty much have the same conversation word for word with um, Shaki asking about Sora's bag, why he was willing to protect it so much, you know, what's in it, what's in there, why he's willing to protect it so much. The conversation then goes on to about the girl that Shaki was there to meet. Like I said previously, the conversation is pretty much the same as in the original story, and everything happens the same, up in the same, just like in the original story, all up until the bit where Chiaki gets hit with the toy plane and then Sora then makes his escape because as we know Chiaki was starting to freak him out just a little bit. So the next day comes, Sora goes to school all excited to start playing basketball in high school but this is where he goes to the court, bumps into the other members of the boys team. Obviously they don't take a liking to him, they take him to the change room, they harass him, they mock him about his trainers and the scene basically plays out the same with them ending up locking them in the changing room. So Sora spends the majority of his first day at school missing all of his classes, but he uses the time to clean the basketballs. This is when Chiaki appears and they have their perfect moment with them spying into the girls changing room, seeing them change. During this time, Chiaki and Sora do have a talk Mostly about how Chiaki, not Chiaki, Sora should give up playing basketball. It's just explaining to him that the basketball team is not a serious team. The only reason that the team exists is because of a school rule where it says that every pupil, every student has to join a team or a club. But however, Sora will show just how determined he is about playing basketball. This will warm to Chiaki where he says, fine, do you know what? Let's play basketball. Ending off the scene with Chiaki kicking the door 
down. So Chiaki and Sora make their way to the courts where Chiaki asks if they can have half the court, the girls team are willing to comply to this. But it's during this time that Madoka warns Sora about the boys, boys team. So just before Sora is about to get his practice on, start his practicing, that's when Momoharu Momo and the rest of the boys team come back into the fray, into the story. They have come into the court now. They see that Sora's broken out. They would tell him, like, you know, that, bro, we warned you what would happen if you try to play basketball here. So this is where they take these trainers that they did threaten to do in when they was in the change room. But because just of how much just because of just how much the trainers mean to Sora, we see him desperately trying to get them back. Chiaki still steps in to stop Mamahamu and we get the reveal of them two being twin brothers. They fight a little, but this frustrates Sora because, you know, they're the basketball team, they're on the basketball court. He just doesn't understand why they will play basketball. And this leads to him shouting this to the members of the basketball team, where we have Chiaki there again basically saying that how, I told you this already, bro. This is not a serious basketball team. We don't really care about that stuff. And... Chiaki does mention that, you know, it's too much work, but I think that's more of his reasoning behind not playing more so the others. So I reckon they're still all like that, but that's more so his reason for not playing basketball. However, because of a promise Sora made to his mum, he is determined to play basketball, obviously joining this team. So he therefore puts forth a challenge to the team. 5v1 if he wins he's allowed to play basketball there in the school if he loses he will quit the basketball team when yes yesu bara saki and nibishima come over to sora and like yo bro don't push your luck how dare you challenge us to five against one who what kind who do you think you are kind of deal this is when kagami taiga comes back into the story and says fine do you know what let's make it 5v2 this is when yes yasuhara will come and say like what are you doing here this is between your basketball team and their members get out of here you're not involved kind of thing and this is where kagami tiger will reply actually i am part of the basketball team so this is my business so what are you saying is it five against two or what are you guys gonna go cry home go home and cry not necessarily all of that but he will mention that how he is part of the basketball team and it hits his business so he has every right to be there madoka will still take Chucky's place just like within the original story but because it's now 5v2 the rules of the victory will slightly change so in the original story all um all Sora had to do was um um was dunk one basket and then he'll win. It will be the same as that now, but there will be a time limit to it. So just before things tee off and the game does begin, K Kagami and Sora will have a little conversation to themselves before the kick things kick off. Well, this will be basically Kagami saying. Just pass the ball to me and I'll take care of the rest. Now, Sora won't respond to this, but you think, I'm kind of going to think, like, cool, he's got the message, we'll, do, we'll go through with that. So the ball will get thrown to Sora just like usual, but because of the bullying, because he wants to show he's not just a little squirt, because he wants to show that he's good on the court. Not just to the basketball team, but to Kagami as well, who he would feel that was taking him lightly just a little bit. We still go through the original story settings where we see Sora basically go through everybody and make his way up to do a layup only to get hit down by Yasura. So before play kicks off again, I can see Madoka instructing Yasuhara, Saki and Nabishima to mark Kagami 
Momo Haru stay under the basket while she takes on Sora one on one. So the game begins again, time is running short. Sora gets by Madoka in a similar fashion as he did before and goes for a layup. But seeing as how he can see Momo Haru about to knock the board away from him, he passes it back. Kagami has got by his defenders and able to grab this pass that Sora has thrown back and go for a dunk winning the match for them in the last few seconds. So Yasu and the other two, you know, they're done playing, they're like, yeah, game's over. So you can join the team now, but you know, they're treating them really like a lackey, like someone who's under them and they're ready to make them go get snacks and stuff of that nature. Momo Haru on the other hand, he's like, nah, this ain't over yet. He's still angry. However, Kagami is able to defuse the situation because of his height they can't really bully him the same way they bully Sora and Kagami's like no we won this for a clear we're not just gonna roll over and do what you say just because you got you guys are the upper classmen this is kind of a hard pill for Momo Haru to swallow but he accepts this and they walk he walks off they walk off with Sora shouting at them that was fun, we need to play basketball again sometime. So Momo Haru and the rest still meet up with Chiaki under that bridge, but the conversation is just a little bit different this time. They say Sora was it better than they expected, but probably only one because they had Kagami's help. The scene with Sora and Madoka will still play out the same with Kagami already gone home, so he's not there for that scene, he's absent. So the next day, Madoka will still see Sora at lunch, offering him some of hers and just go off. But after that, we'll see Kagami join Sora and join the time together. They will have a conversation about what, have it, what happened yesterday. And it's during this conversation that will come up through Sora first. He'll say, I think it's possible that Momo Haru and Chiaki do have prior basketball experience. Kagami will agree to this saying that he can smell something on them. So with Kagami now in the story, that whole scene where you see Yasuhara and the other two bullies stop Sora from training straight away anyway, won't be able to happen. They'll be able to go to training straight away, meaning that the whole scene where we have Sora and Chiaki interacting with each other again, actually now does not happen. Momo Haru and the rest of the boys team will still meet up like they did even the original story and every, everything will play out pretty much the same. They'll still go to that convenience store, they'll still get into the fight and they'll still end up going back to the school. Shiaki will still spark the conversation which triggers the memories for Momo Haru back to when he was in middle school, part of the basketball team. He will also still walk out of the changing room However, this is where a slight change will occur. Because Sora and Kagami were able to start their practice at a reasonable hour, they would have finished at a more reasonable hour, meaning at this moment in time, Momo Haru won't bump into Madoka because she too would have also already gone home and obviously won't bump into Sora as well because he too has already gone home. So he won't get to see the practice that he was putting in and he won't know about the freeze that um, Sora can throw. So that's where I'm going to leave the what if for now, but stay with me for a little, just a little bit longer. So as you can see, the story is played out pretty much the same for now, and things are just a slight, tiny little bit different. With the inclusion of Kagami, Sora has a better school life right now. He's not getting bullied. The only thing different is that he hasn't displayed his freeze. His freeze are not on show. So no one, besides maybe Kagami, because he, he may have seen it in the practice, and Madoka will have seen it in the practice as well. The rest of the team doesn't know about his amazing freeze. So Kagami, you know, pretty much the same as he is within his story as well. The only difference about him so far is that he's not as motivated to become the best player in Japan as he is in his own series and I think this is simply because of there being no inclusion of a generation of miracles. 
in his series, he was hyped up about the generation of miracles, knowing that there was somebody out there better than him that he could surpass. He doesn't have that currently within within this scenario. And looking at Momo Haru, he, he's pretty much the same as well. He's just not as alone as he would have been within the original story of him warming up to the fact of playing basketball again. And this is simply because of him missing out on seeing Sora do that practice would have which 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 would have taken place within episode two. So that's it for now guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am not going to do a part two of this simply because I don't know how it's going to be received. You know, is it something that people want or not? So I won't be doing a part two of this video until this gets 10 likes. Not on the post it was, um, it was included in, not on the tweet that was included in, 10 likes on the video itself before I do a part two. So like always guys, I'm asking for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, take care. Have a nice day.